Also with us here in studio is Mark Belsberg, the chairman at One Family, an organization that offers social, financial, and emotional assistance to victims of terror, as well as an entrepreneur and philanthropist. Thank you again as well for being here. There is for lack of a better word, a situation of complete chaos and uncertainty. We have tens of thousands of soldiers, of reservists on the front lines. We have families that are displaced, literally been ripped apart from the fact that their loved ones have been murdered, kidnapped, or are either missing. The country's political, economic situation, the country is in a disarray. How is the organization trying to assist with this? And, and you've been doing so for decades. Why is this time different? Well, one family has been dealing for the last 22 years with individual events that occur every, in the beginning that would occur perhaps every week or two, after that every month or two, and then much later even less. When you're dealing with one-offs, it's very, very, very different. But the, but the, the process or the message that I think we bring to the, the individuals is the same message for the, for the group of Israel as, 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 a, uh, as a unit. And I think it basically, I'll, tell you, I'll start by telling a story that I think gives you the, the whole picture. My son, when he was like four and a half years old, my wife tells me I was out of town. My wife tells me he cries at night. I've asked him why, he doesn't tell me. So one night when I was back, I put him to bed and he burst into tears. And I said, what are you crying about? He said, you're gonna die, you're gonna die. And I said, I might, I hope that won't be, I hope I won't, but if I do, there's other people around who are gonna take care of you. It won't be the same, it won't be the same. We took him for a, for a evaluation, my wife and myself and him. And at the end of the evaluation, the doctor said, the problem is very simple. You're bringing home to, this, to your table all the stories that you have during the day that this one was murdered and this one was kidnapped and this one was killed and you gotta don't talk about that stuff in front of the kids just keep them away from it completely okay now here it's different because it's on every tv the pictures are on every tv and there's no way you can keep them away from it never mind tv it's on social media which is exactly where this this generation is getting it from it's on TikTok videos on instagram right absolutely right okay absolutely absolutely right i think the, the answer is it is a few fold okay the first thing is kids need to know that their parents are there to protect them Kids need to be smothered in love, and mom and dad have to tell the little kid, I'm, I'm here to protect you. And if they feel protected, uh, whether, whether it's a, an illusion, okay, but if they feel protected, they'll have an ability to, to function, okay? On the issue of, um, of the chaos in the country, that's really a, a, on a massive scale. I think that one of the problems that one family will have in dealing with the future cases is that they're all coming in at once. Right, instead of piece by piece. But the way, the strategy that we use, and I think it applies to the, whole, to the whole nation, the strategy we use is people need to feel comforted and they feel safe. How do you feel safe? You feel safe as you have friends who are with you and you feel like we're in this together. It's not just me by myself in my house. You know, you're my, you're my neighbor, I can go to you, you're my friend, I can call you. The whole of Israel is in this together. If we could have that kind of attitude, which I think, by the way, we do today, there is a sense of the unity of the people of Israel, thank the God. camaraderie. Right, camaraderie, but it's, 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 a, it's, it's a support group. It's a massive support group where people need to feel that they are, if something happens, they know where they can go, they know who they can call. And that gives them a sense of, of peace and a sense of quiet. In the 30 seconds that we have left of the broadcast, I wanna ask, you mentioned all of us being together, and I think that's how we will truly recover from this. We're a nation that survived the horrors and were built off the horrors of the Holocaust. Right. We have to survive this as well. We will. We will. I would just say one more thing. The, what, it, what gives me courage, right, and uh, to, to go on, is being a student of the Bible. I feel like I'm kind of watching. I'm living in a movie, right? The Bible tells you what's going to happen and when it's going to be the gap. The Jews will be gathered into Israel once again. And there's all these prophecies what will happen and you could just wake up in the morning and read the read the prophets and read the bible and you say I'm, this is i've got i've got the movie i know exactly what's going to happen next and i have a sense of confidence that we're going in the right direction and it's going to end well mark bellsberg the chairman at one family an organization that offers social financial and emotional assistance to victims of terror and entrepreneur and philanthropist i as an Israeli, I want to thank you on behalf of the state for the incredible work that you do and continue to do because at this time it is so needed and just so important. And, and thank you for being here as well. Thank you for having me. Here. I'm joined now. I want to bring in my guest, Avi Hartuv, psychotherapy and group facilitator in trauma and emergency for one family. Avi, thank you so much for joining me. You've been working with some of the victims of, of this attack. I can't imagine uh, the, the help that they absolutely need right now, but it's incredible incredibly difficult even three and a half weeks since that attack. Hello, Nicole, and thank you for hosting me. 
And I'm talking to you from Ofa Kim, 25 kilometers of the Gaza border, a town of 35,000 people, and I apologize for the background noise. So um, I want to point out the two uh, main uh, missions that we have as a community here in Israel. One is to do everything possible to bring back home safely all the 228 hostages and uh, captive soldiers and captive civilians from age zero to age 18, 90. And we need to do everything possible that we can. This is a humanity mission. If we zoom out and look at humanity as one, that's what every single one of us should keep in our hearts. The second mission that we have as a people is to gradually begin to claim back life, a certain degree of normality, a certain degree of routine. And that's what we're doing both individually and in groups. And one family has been known for decades to work with victims of terror and their families. And one of the aspects of terror and the victims of terror is the sense of helplessness, the sense of loneliness, the panic, the anxiety, and um, the alienation. And if we just look at the name, one family, we can see within it an intention for belonging. We are, me, myself, not alone, in many colleagues, one family in another organizations, we are focused on the sense of belonging, on the sense of life purpose, on the sense of reclaiming a sense of humanity and restoring the faith that was spoken on October 7th. Mm. It's a beautiful ready for a question. message <laughs> you're, you're sharing. And I, I'm curious, though, because you mentioned people coming together, regaining a sense of normalcy. But it's incredibly difficult as so many people's routines have completely been upended. Many of their loved ones either serving on the front lines, reserve soldiers, some of their loved ones, as you mentioned, still kidnapped, held in Gaza. So how do they work through this grief while there is still this unknown and the war rages on? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. It's like a very um, open wound. Um, and uh, the work is on so many layers. And we need to remember that not everybody is in trauma. That there is a whole spectrum of what we call trauma. Could be one extreme people who are completely incapacitated to do any clear thinking or any functioning or any relating. And on the other extreme, we have people who continue to function and are relatively well. So we need to pay attention that the healing of trauma and the restoring of life and functioning in the sense of humanity is on a spectrum of individual, individual responses. People approach this with their individual strengths and weaknesses, with their resources and resilience. And there are people who need more support and more help, people who need less. So on the extremes, we do one-to-one -one work. We have so many, so many different modalities of therapy. Uh, the society of healers and therapists in this country has been always curious and thirsty for knowledge. And we have received major world teachers who have come here even with before Zoom and during Zoom to teach. And we have a very, very wide and rich um, repertoire of interventions you can do individually. And what I noticed now, there's a strong calling to keep supporting and work with individuals who are on the extreme side of the spectrum, and also at the same time to cultivate the consciousness of working in groups. Working in groups could be a therapeutic modality, and it could be men's circles, which I do, and my colleagues do lots of men's circles today, and it's very, very important, including men's circles with soldiers. And it could be anywhere from dancing and artwork and playback and acting and theater and um, just a whole range of alternative care, yoga and singing and spirituals. We need to elicit right now, all of us, professionals and facilitators of any modalities that we can bring groups together because the connection the relating are crucial to moving forward. So yes, some people do need the individual, maybe classic psychotherapy, maybe more alternative psychotherapy. And there are many, so there are many within the psychotherapy, there are many options. And some of us, some people need something more uh, 
organic to life in gentle. So um, I hope I'm answering what you asked. If you know, ask me again or ask me. Yes. Question. No. I, it, th thank you. I think all of the different resources that One Family offers is is truly amazing. Uh, Avi, I'm, I'm curious because you said that you and those at One Family, you've constantly been working with different survivors, people, family who have been, been impacted by terror attacks. Uh, so you've seen this in the past, but is there anything different about what's happening now that, that stands out to you? Yeah, I believe that the major difference is the sense of uh, break of trust and break of faith, which happened in the very beginning and very sharp way. And it was a result of being completely surprised in the sense of pogrom. For some people, it was a sense of a return to Holocaust. On the first the Sahara Holocaust survivors said, don't compare this to the Holocaust, because in the Holocaust, we had no safe harbor, safe heaven to go back to. And here, next to the 1,400 people killed, 228 people hostages, hundreds of wounded. We have a country and we have a state that gives us a frame of reference and a safe or a safe heaven. Nonetheless, what is unique about this situation is that crisis, that break of trust and faith, and gradually, gradually, time is helping, and therapies are helping, and communities are helping, and the magnificent work that is being done by the amazing open-hearted volunteers that have gathered together throughout the country anything from food and medication and beds and linen and clothing and homes to hotels that give hospitality. It's been a tremendous uh, uh, engagement. Sorry, you're cutting People off a little bit from your uh, from your connectivity, but we so appreciate all of the work that you and everyone at One Family is doing. Uh, thank you so much for okay. talking about how we're going to continue to get through this uh, atrocious attack. Avi Hartu, thank you.